Okay, guys, let's have a look here at the 2024 Junior Cycle Graphics exam. So I'll just click on there to the first page. Okay, so question 1A here was the image below shows four terms associated with circles. So concentric is coinciding. So that one, because eccentric would be this with two different centers or off centers. And radius, well, that's a radius. Segment or a quadrant, so that's a quadrant is a quarter, and tangent there, the line that just touches the circle. So that's our first part of it there. So the next section here, then using a tick indicates whether each of these statements is true or false. So the diameter divides the circle into two equal parts, that would be true. So there's 360 degrees in a circle, that would be true. And half of the radius is equal to the diameter. That would be false. Because if you have a circle, and that's the radius, well, half of the radius is not the diameter. So that would be question 1A and B. Now question C there is basically revolving a triangle gives you a cone. So it's about uh, how the shape gives you the form. So it says, also shown as a tea light holder there based on a hemisphere and a truncated cone. So how 2D shapes gives 3D forms basically is what they're talking about. So complete a freehand sketch of a 3D object created when each shape below is revolved about its given axis and apply appropriate rendering to each sketch to achieve a 3D effect. Okay, so uh, I'll just zoom in there a little bit. So basically, this is going to be a hemisphere. So uh, just roughly trying to calculate there are a few points for this ellipse that we're going to have here. So, I'll keep this pretty light in the start. So that's roughly going to be our ellipse on top here. So what I want to do there then is just complete the, the hemisphere part of that. So I'm going to color, or I'm going to render this here now a little bit. Just putting on a few lines there just to indicate the curvature and that. So what I will do there then is I think I'll just pause the video there now and I will uh, render that in because it would take too long. But the gist of it there is I'm going to try and go a bit heavier. I'm going to try and go a bit heavier to the outsides. get a bit lighter then as we come in and keep this pretty light here but I'll pause this again now because I might go over some of those outer lines there with the pen afterwards now a great thing to do for effect is just to put base or, or a surface underneath it.
So something like that would do fine, and you know you can always then just okay. So that's the first one done, and I'll just adjust this camera down a little bit. Okay, so our second one here is a truncated cone. So again, there just want to draw kind of an ellipse. On top, and an ellipse along the bottom here. So I'm just kind of going level from the center. That would be pretty symmetrical. You're just trying to figure out a few points before you start it. So you want to keep this light uh, because you're not going to see all of it in a second. So even if I just complete this really light there just to help you understand. So that would be uh, the base uh, circle and that would be the top circle looking like ellipses. So I want a tangent coming down here, a tangent coming down there. This would be my base. Here would be the top. Now again, I'm going to put a surface underneath that. Just put some colors on that again there and I'll just change up the colors. So I want straight lines out on the end here. And then I want to go from dark on the outside. And the key thing there is that all the lines that you draw would be going towards the top point, which would be the apex of the cone up there. So you're kind of going, aiming them towards there. Okay, so that would do fine for the first uh, question there. That's So that's A, B and C done. Okay, so question two A here is looking for a freehand pictorial sketch of the whistle. So the first thing you want to do there is kind of just get an idea of if you create this, put it into a crater box where it's roughly two to one. So the height is one and the side is two. So I basically want to draw Two to one creating here one two and then this is going to be a one in this direction. So that can be very light. So that is where our whistle is going. So that would be about the middle of the whistle here and the whistle is straight up from there and straight down from there and over here. So halfways and it's going slightly above halfways there as well. So so that there would be the outline of our whistle. 
2H is probably a bit harder for sketching now. It comes down to about here, comes back in to about there, and slopes downwards here then until it touches the, the curve of the whistle. So that would be the front view of the whistle. So what I want to do there then is just take these across heavy. Now, this is a little bit tricky here now, right? So I might measure with the pencil here. So if that's the width of that from there, that would be the width of that to here. So that would be bottom of the whistle there. And again, so that would be about the top of that there. So we'll have a guess at this. So there's our whistle, something like that. Now, the opening on the whistle here then, if I bring that up there, bring that up here, it is kind of starting straight up from there and going a small bit back past the vertical of this. So I think it's about here. I'm going to just get my angle right for that. So there's the opening and the whistle there. And I suppose there, and I'm just trying to figure out if you can see in here now, you will be able to see that corner here will be coming back to there. And it would be starting to slope down here then, I guess. Okay, so we're seeing into the whistle there now just a little bit. So that there is the whistle. And again, I'm going to put a surface underneath it. Something like that. Throw a bit of colour on it. Now what colour to do this whistle is an interesting one, alright. Um, so I have some colour here that's kind of golden brown, yeah, I might just change that. So I want to start fairly so you'll notice I'm trying to go parallel to the angle there of the isometric. I'll just try and go very light along the sides of it here now. Just try and darken this in a tiny bit inside here now. Okay, so something like that there now, that wouldn't be so bad. So that's 2A there, which is our 
pictorial sketch. So then question 2b, the image shows a set of goals shown below is the outline in view of the goals. Okay, so draw a new set of goals similar to the given set with a length AB increased to AB1. So okay, this is an enlargement. So I'm going to just grab a colour here again. So I might just do it in yellow. Okay, so if we enlarge the bottom staunch in there out to here. So then it's going vertical. And when enlarging from A, now I could give some of these corners letters if I wanted. But the key thing here is if we enlarge out through A, A, B, if I call that C and D. So when, when I enlarge C, it has to be out. So that has to be the new C1. And then D is horizontal to that. So that's D1. So this here, then I'll just put it in yellow, my new figure. So there's our similar, similar means the same angles and like horizontal horizontal vertical vertical like that now question 2a then or question 2c so shown across is an elevation of a sports trophy the trophy includes a regular polygon name the polygon so it's got six sides so it's a hexagon So using the dimensions given, we draw the trophy on the center line and the baseline below. Okay, so I'll just reset that camera there now to take in the whole page. So I would start off here. The height of this is 25. So I'm going to actually mark a few heights on this here now, I think. So I'm going to come up 25 is my first one and then 60 more. So that there's my second height and then 30 more. Is my third height. So this is the center of the hexagon. That 30 there is the bottom of the circle. Okay, so just draw that circle light. That's the circle going through that. Uh, because that's a hexagon, I know that. I can basically do a 60 degree X. To find those corners. So that gives me these corners that I wanted here. And I can fill in. The angles here no, 
that is all that's heavy on that I guess so from here it comes down to the ground so this radius 25 single circle I'll draw that in next Now out here there's a radius 45 circle. So I'll just draw that in a light for now. And then there's a radius 55 circle hitting, touching that and touching here. So what I need to do is add these two uh, radii, so there's 45 and 50, 55, which adds up to 100. So I just want to step off over here, 100. And I also want to step off there, 55, for setting my compass. So. It has to be 100 from here, and it has to be 55 from this point here. So that there now should be the center. I'm going to just join that back to here. So just join the centers. And that should be the point of contact. So that when I set my compass to there now. So. And I'll just heavy that in there then. The first part there. I just had that drawn noise. So that is all of that done there, except I need to heavy in just that circle part up here. Okay. And I don't think there was any need to have drawn in these lines here. I can put them in light if I want. They <clears throat> weren't really needed. Okay, so show all constructions and points of contact. Okay, so showing all the points of contact, well, that's one point of contact there. And I think that's it there. Well, they're all shown anyway, I think. So that's question two, A, B, and C done. Now, so question three here, then, the company sells a range of office supplies and equipment, but it was a stapler, and space provided, draw a well-proportioned freehand sketch of the elevation of the stapler looking in the direction of arrow A, okay, so the elevation looking from A, so again there now, uh, proportion is the thing here really, and I suppose, don't get, uh, fooled maybe by the, the shape of the box here because if I decide to put if that is the bottom of the stapler the proportion of this so let's say it goes up to about you know that much there comes in steps up here so that there is the blue section now it didn't 
ask you to color it, but I will just stick a bit of light bit of color on this there just to help people to understand it. So that's our blue part of the stapler there. And then starting here, you know, when you get the angle of this roughly, you know, I'd be guessing there that's an angle of about 20 degrees or something like that. But that has gone up there like this. And say that's quite 20 degrees, but anyway. And I'm presuming there that it's. I think it just looks like it's something short of it here. So I want this to be a 90 degree angle here. That's the important thing. That that would be a 90 degree angle. That this goes back parallel. And again. That would be going all the way back there. So that would be the red section of this. So again, 90 degree angle there and a 90 degree angle here is key. So that was the red part. Now again, you weren't asked to color this, and in the exam I wouldn't bother because you'd be wasting time. There's no marks for it. But just to help people understand, and finally then this last section here, I stepped back in a little bit. And I think it's probably about the same height as this. There's the final section of that there. Let's just use that. And again, 2H is probably a bit light for these sketches. You might be better off with um, a B pencil to go along the edges of them, really. But again, proportion is the thing there, so uh, you know, having the right height to the width and all that. So, that's our front view of that. So then question 3B, the image below, it's a push pin supplied by a company. So there's the push pin stuck vertically, so it says redraw the push pin rotated anti-clockwise until A reaches the line. Okay, so so when that gets rotated down, that's A1, the new position of A. Now I would say what you want to do here really is you can do these with kind of minimal points. If I could find this center line here, uh, this would be how I would go about it now. If I could find that center line going up there, uh, if I could find that over here, now I seriously need to sharpen this pencil, so bear with me there for a sec. So I'm going to try and find that center line over there. So I could do that by finding this point here. So O and A. So I'm going to just call that point B, I think, here. So this is kind of based on a thing called triangulation. I know the distance from O to B. 
and I know the distance from A to B so that there has to be B going through O so that there now is the center line of the pen so it colors in, in yellow again just so you can follow that and now by finding the center line here in its new position I can kind of use parallel lines and axial symmetry and all kinds of things here now to to complete this so I'll just join B to A there and that's the angle for the center axis there so so I, I know that it's symmetrical here now so I can finish this now pretty quickly because if I find a couple of more points here if I call that point C and this point D if I find all of those points on the new center axis So that's C, that is D, they are all perpendicular, so I'll just put on lines containing them, I'm going to take the distance from the centre out to the edge of that. So that's going to give me my top point here. And then I'll take my distance for C. Now you could measure this. If it's very small sometimes, you're better off to measure it. So that there is about my... So it's going to be fairly faded. So that's about 8 mil, so 4 to the left and 4 to the right. So I can join this up. And this distance here I, I it's symmetrical anyway and finally don't forget to just heavy in the spike of the pen as well So that is our pen drawn in the new position. So then next up here, C is draw a parabola. The image below is a design for a, a binder clip. Clip includes a parabola dock with vertex at O. Okay, so draw the parabola in the rectangle ABCD over here. So just basically, regular parabola so I'm gonna use four points on this so I'm gonna use 80 mil here so this is division of a line so I'm just gonna go 20 40 I'll put it a bit heavy there so you can see it so 20 40 60 80 so here's a line divided into four equal distances so join the end to the end, like that. Now you don't need to put the arrows and all this stuff on it. I'm just doing that there, just to help people understand. So that is the angle to bring them in at, so that they stay proportional. And 
that is the height broken into four equal distances and then they all go to the vertex here which is O Now the next thing I want to do then is I want to break the half the width into four equal distances. So I'll just measure out here 40 and go tens, 10, 20, 30, 40. So join the fourth one back to the end, to the end. And I just want to go parallel again here. So just bring them in parallel and then down so first middle to the middle short one to the short one so there are the three points that I need now I'm going to use then a symmetry I'm going to use symmetry to transfer them across because it is symmetrical so how far to the left same distance to the right and one little trick there to help you drawing these curves if you want it is these straighten out a lot these straighten out a lot as they go so so on those longer straighter ones there you could just draw some light straight lines So that's our parabola down there, D O C. Now, 3D here. So the image across shows a pen holder. Fill in the missing word in the sentence below. So the pen holder is a truncated square based what? Now, truncated means kind of cut at an angle. But basically, it's a square based prism. Okay, so the original shape is a square based prism. Complete the elevation of the pin holder from the given plane. Okay, so I'm going to just number this to help people understand. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four corners here. When I bring these up, that's one and two. So three. So and the tall corner here is one and two and three as well on the three D. So one and two, three is up here, and three is the low height. And finally four is up here. Bring it up light. Four is the tall height at the back because there's only two heights really so they're joining up one two three and 
four, or I could put four up here or down there. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so complete the elevation of the pen holder. Now, always just wonder, is there any dotted lines there? And there would be here. So there would be a dotted line going down there at the back, because you're looking in from the front here. And then find the true shape of the surface S. Now the surface S is this surface here. That surface S. Now surface S, if I put blue on that, that's it here. And that's it here. But that's not the real size of it. So there's a few different ways of doing this too, really. I could do it by rotation, or I could do it by what's called an auxiliary. So I'm going to look at doing it by a rotation first. And I'm going to rotate it all the way around. So I'm going to swing two over here. So that's, it's like swinging the door of a press or the door of anything really. So I'm after swinging two over here. Bring the height across. And two joints to one. So that here is the true shape, TS for true shape. So I just highlight it in there like that. That is doing it by rotation. So now when I'm looking in from here, that there is That is the surface, like a door. So it's like when you're looking straight at a door. Now, the other way that I could have done this now, because this is, you know, more of a learning video, is instead of standing looking in here, if I walked around, stood in front of that surface, and looked up here, So I'll put a new XY line here. So when I'm looking up, two is up there, one is up here. Now the height of the low corner there, which is close to me, the height of corner two is this. The height of corner one is that. Corner two, corner one. So there's the slope. And that is an other way of finding that same surface there, true shape there of surfaces. Okay, so 3E, so you're given a 3D view, isometric view, I'd say, of uh, a cut object. But the original object was 120 wide, 115 high, and it's 75 deep. So draw the elevation looking from A. So this is straightforward enough, the top view. And an in view looking from B. So this is the important thing is the in view is looking from B, so it's going to get drawn at the right hand side. And the height of this is 115. So there are all the key details. So I will just uh, zoom back out there. Okay, 
So the first thing here, the height is 115. So uh, and the depth. So I, I have plenty of space here anyway. So you want to make sure you leave yourself first and have plenty of room here. So that should work out fine there. So I'll just put an XY line across here. So my height is 115. So I can just box this in if I want. And that's going to be 120 wide. So the front view is 120 wide and I'm going to need another 75 so there's plenty of room there. So I'm going to just really lightly box in really lightly box in for the elevation here for the front view. So if it, if it fitted in a box that would be the box for the front view. And now I can start putting on distances here. So there's a cut 20 in and 20 down. But what I would actually prefer to do, I think, is I would prefer to put on these distances. So it goes 20 and 15 heavy. Then there's 55. Bringing me over here. And then there's 30 to the end, but there's a radius 20 circles. So okay, so I will just put on those couple of lines there. Those distances will will make life easier. And the heights then it goes 30, 20, 30, 15, and 20. So I'm going to put them on as well. So it goes 30. Then 20, then 30, then 15, and then 20 left. So that's my heights along here. So here's my slope here, 45 degree slope there, that blue one there, goes over level, drops down. Drops down until it's level with that corner there. And then that slopes back up to here. And this then comes down to 15 and goes in until it's level with that. So I'm trying to find this corner here. So it's down from the end 30. It is across. So that point there is this point here. So then that drops down 30. Now, and this corner, you see, what you're always looking for here is these light lines over here <clears throat> telling you what lines up with what. So this corner here is straight down from D this being D up here. So I'm going to come straight down from D. So that's where this goes into there. Now it slopes down to the up 30. Okay, 
okay so slope over up all the ways across out to the very edge now just to kind of help people see it those blue cuts there's one there there's one here it comes over along so that's that one that's that one and the slope going down here as well so that is all of the front view done except this radius 20 curve okay. so that radius 20 curve I'm basically trying to draw a very light square over here which is down 20 and in 20 So we have a little quarter circle here, radius 20. Ah, should always have checked that there now just to make sure that this is going to stay within the, within the corners of the thing. Okay, so there's our quarter. So that there is the front view done. So project all those lines down. Well, I wouldn't bring them all down for starters. Just bring down the outsides. <coughs> Leave 20 between them. It doesn't have to be 20 there, but. Now from the back to the front, I need 20 and 55. So here's 20. Just put a little dot there. And then 55. Now the footprint of this, looking down on top of it, I will see the full rectangle. So I'm going to just actually heavy in all of the outsides of that there now. Now looking down from above, the first thing I will see here is that rectangle there where C and D are above. So I'm projecting that down. Now you'll notice there I actually do draw stuff in heavy as I'm working, well, but only when I'm pretty certain that I know what I'm doing or that it's right so and I would also start from the top and you, know, you don't need to color this in but I will just put that bit of blue on it there again to help people to see what surface is what so that's the sloping surface here now the next blue surface over I'm going to put that in next so again that's straight on from here So this is the other sloping surface there. I'm not going to get too much bother from shading this now because I don't want to make the video too long. But just for helping people doing these in future years, looking back over these videos, it's useful. So. Now, down underneath now, and this is not the, the cutout that's taken here, only it stops 20 in. So I want to put a dotted line now showing where that stops. And that goes all the way into here. So that's the inside of that kind of a... Uh, um, it's not really a, a trench or, or whatever you want to call it that's removed there, that uh, part that's removed out of it. Now, what else will I see? Straight down from D, 
there would be a dotted line there but I can't see it because it's straight underneath the heavy line here so I don't need to worry about that so I think that is all the dotted lines that's on this and I'm not I might to show really light Uh, that the curve only starts beyond here so the curve is to the right so this bit coming over here is flat um, but I, I, I wouldn't have a heavy line in it at all so we want to finally then That might have been off camera there, I hope it wasn't. And finally, 45 degree line. So bring our lines over. And up. Now again there, when I'm looking in from the side here, I am going to see the full rectangle. So I'm going to, you know, because it goes all the way up across, I will see the full rectangle. So I will heavy that in there. Again there, if I'm standing here looking in at that, the first thing I'm going to see there is this shape here. It's like an in lying on its side and I want to start with that. So that's up 30, coming in from the right. And then it goes up 20 and 30 more, which is 50 more. And it goes back over here then to the end. So that is this. And then that the blue slope now when I put the blue slope in there it probably help turn out. Okay, so the blue slope if I could find my blue pencil, there we go. So the blue slope is here. So that's sloping upwards and away from us there as we look at it down towards us I'm not sure which way you want to think of that so that is that then this we're now looking into that cut there so I can see a slope here uh, which is up 50 level with that So that is the other lower down blue slope here. And oh, now is there any more dotted lines for the details? Now this, the bottom of this slope here goes all the way across. Okay. So that's contained, right? So yeah, that's already hidden behind this. So there's no dotted line running over here. That one stops there. And I think that is it. 
Now it says there then, so draw the elevation plan in view, an index point C and D plan elevation and in view. Okay, so now looking down from above. Okay, so looking down from above, point C is here and point D is there. Looking in from the front, you see D first and C is behind it. So when I bring this over and up, that is point D. That is point C. Because uh, they're across from here at this height there at the top height. So that's C and D indexed in all the views. So yeah, that is all of, of E. Now, question four then. So the image below shows a pictorial view of the helicopter. Match the correct letter with the appropriate orthographic view uh, in the table. Okay, so looking in from here, so C is the front view. Now they've given us B, which is looking in from the back there, okay? So if, if B is looking in from the back, D must be looking in from the front. And finally then, A is looking down from above. So E, D, C, B. Now, B, shown below is the design for a helicopter landing pad. The outline of the similar pad is shown also. So divide the line AB into five equal parts and complete the drawing of the landing pad and show all constructions. So this is division of a line. So we spoke about this earlier on. So I'm going to just draw a line here, 50 long. Put little dots at 10, 20, 30, 40. Okay. So this is a line divided into five equal parts. So if I join the end of that to the end of the line I want to divide, so here, this is the angle I want to use now for all of them. So I want to bring all of those in at that same angle. And that keeps the proportion the same. So now, I'll just put a new set of little dots here so you can see what I'm talking about. So now AB is also divided into five equal parts. So the next move to draw those circles so it's got to be true the divisions on a b now okay that's the key thing there it has to be on the new divisions on the radius here that you draw them from Now it's very important for drawing small circles that when you close in your compass that uh, they be exactly the same length, okay? If your lead is sticking out long or short of the point, uh, it's very difficult to draw small circles like that. Now guys, it didn't ask you to colour these in, so I'm not going to waste time because I would waste a load of time there. So always check if you're asked and if you're not asked to colour, well, don't bother really, even though sometimes I do just to help people understand, but don't colour in an exam unless you're asked to colour. Okay, so 4C, the image on the right below shows the packaging for the toy helicopter. Shown below is the front view, the elevation, the end view, and the incomplete surface development of the packaging. Now take note here now, all is little things here. Because you can see into this box, it means there's no top on it. So there's only the base 
and the four sides so that's important to notice and for all intents and purposes I'm going to call this the front okay so this so from the in view is there's three dimensions here right the width the height and the depth so I want uh, for the top view now I want the depth next so so 3d image the elevation in view Okay, so we, we weren't asked to draw a top view, it was only the development. So that's the base. what is the height of this no I can take it from up here so when the side falls out it'll go that far and also the front when it's folded down so that is the front This is the side. Here's the other side. So that would be the front. That's the left hand side, that's the right hand side. B for the back. And when I'm looking in from here, that would be the left hand side. Like that. So complete the surface development of the packaging. So dotted folding lines and uh, heavy outside lines. Okay, so use a tick to indicate the correct answer to the complete the following statements. Okay, so the sum of the focal radii PF1 and PF2. So from P to F1 and P to F2 is equal to. Now look, if you weren't sure about this, uh, if you were to measure it even, you would find there that that's about 94 and this is about 38 I'd say so 132 so half the major axis well half the major axis is is only 66 or whatever so if i check this here that is like 132 or 130 yeah so basically it's equal to the full length of the major axis so you could kind of figure that out so just to put this back here again like that's 38 and that's 94 from P to F2. So if you add them, it's equal to the sum of the full major axis. <coughs> so then the next thing was construct a tangent at point P. Okay, so constructing a tangent, I'll use a color here now just to kind of make this simpler. So I want to draw a big X. T 
two developer points. And I'm going to bisect uh, one of the angles in the X. So the bigger we can do this, the better. So just draw an arc of a circle. that there's our tangent. And if I bisected this one, this angle instead, it would give me a line like this here, it's called the normal, which would be 90 degrees to the tangent. So I'll construct a tangent to the ellipse of point P. So that's done. Okay. So, 4E there, right, shown on the right is the dimension drawing of a toy helicopter. ABCD is an ellipse. Okay, so BD is the minor axis. And that was given to you. And they gave you the focal points. Okay, so um, I'll zoom back and then I'll zoom out here again. But Uh, so, just adjust the camera there for a second so people can see the, the problem here. So, you've got the minor axis, which means you can draw the minor circle, but you didn't get the major axis. Okay. So, that's the minor circle. But, what are looking for there by giving you the focal points and is there is a construction there if I draw it in over here that from the end of the top of the minor to the focal point is equal to half of the major axis so if you just set your compass so BF, okay, so from the top there, from B to F, or from D to F, because it's symmetrical, or from F to B, any of those, that's the size, the radius of the minor axis. So you can see there that if you didn't understand that, you probably just guessed. People might have guessed just the end of that line given there, and it's uh, like 10 mil off or whatever. Not a big deal, you know, and if you're not sure, just guess and keep going. But that was what the construction they were looking for was being looked for there. So I'm going to go ahead there, and I'm going to just draw this ellipse. So... Now I'll draw this a little bit heavier. Now if you're, if you're watching the videos of the past papers, um, you shouldn't really be looking at drawing an ellipse for the first time. So I'm not really going to go through it here now because it's in other videos. And so there's our spokes. I'll be saying to try and do two at the time when you know what you're doing because they all line up. Now, did we want the full ellipse heavy? We did. Okay, so again there now, if you find ellipse is difficult, what you could do there is join the dots with straight lines, really light. So 
So I'll just do it for the top here. So you could just use straight lines there. Zoom in here a little bit. And it does make life easier, all right. So there's our ellipse. Now I need to zoom back out again there, but. So the rotor is up 15. So the rotor is up 15, line across, and the rotor lines up with the focal points. So straight up from the focals. So I'm kind of, I'm having this in with a, with a HB because I want it to just come out pretty, pretty clear on the camera. So there's our rotor. Now, uh, the skis are uh, on, or the landing skis are down 10. So I'll just adjust that again so you can see what I'm drawing. So they're down 10. The supports are 35 to either side of the center. So 35 to the left, 35 to the right. I'm going to draw them in. No, the actual a uh, line then goes heavy straight below the focal points as well again and then there's a radius 10 circle okay so i'll just set my compass there so this distance here was 10 So up 10, just draw a little light horizontal out there to know where to stop. And that's our quarter circle there. Okay, so there's our landing skis, and our rotor is done. So the tail rotor next. So the tail rotor. Okay, so the tail rotor is level would be. And 45 behind the end of the curve here for the, the landing ski. So 45 back there, up vertically. And that here 
is the center for that. So the small circle there, there's a radius 30 and a radius 15. And the 15 is a heavy circle and the 30 is a light circle. So just be aware of that before you go drawing it. So I'll draw the 15 first, heavy. And the 30 is light. Now if you wanted to, you could just mark because there's there. You don't really need to draw it all heavy. If you didn't want to, I might just put in little parts of it there. So those rotors now are vertical. Twenty degrees, which is also thirty degrees and thirty degrees. So there's our rotor tail, tail rotor, and there's a heavy line coming over here. Now from the oh, this is a tangent. Now one second there now. So just reading over here now, it says the A, B, C, D is an ellipse. O, T is a tangent to the circle. O, T is a tangent to the circle. So this is O. Right, so we have to do a tangent construction here, which is just to remind people here. Here's a circle. Here's a point. If I want to draw a tangent, I'm going to join to the center, bisect that line draw a semicircle on it and that's the point in for the tangent it's that construction I definitely want the light pencil for this so join to the center now I might actually just zoom in here on this so that people can Okay, so I join from O to the centre here. Now I'm going to bisect that line there to find the, the middle of it. So open your compass more than halfway. Is, there's an awful lot going on here now. But anyway. So I'm after bisecting that line. find the middle of it I'll just put a little in there so that's the middle between O and the center of the tail rotor now I want to draw a semicircle like I was talking about over there in the sketch so from the middle here's the semicircle that goes between both of them and it's where that semicircle now what I was talking about look over here in the sketch It's where that semicircle cuts the rotor circle. That is the point I'm looking for. That there is the tangent going back to the center. And just zoom back out there now that we have it. So, and that just comes towards and stops so I only want to show that part of it there heavy but like it's about four mil or so to the right of below the center so it's not down underneath the center it's to the right of it so yeah it would have been easy enough now it's the importance of reading the question carefully there just so that you don't miss stuff like that so OT is a tangent to the circle so just go back to where we were here now so we've got our rotor done um, the tail section there um, I need to draw this line so over 35 
and straight up from that support it gives me a point here now that point there is this point here and that joins to the top of So that gives me the line there. And finally, now I want a radius 30 arc touching here and touching there. Okay, so, okay, there was a couple of nice little, um, there was a couple of nice little constructions looked for inside here. So radius 30 arc, so I'm just gonna set out radius 30 arc here. Don't set it off your set squares, it's a bad habit. So that's 30 there. So if the arc goes through here and there, the center must be 30 out from both of them. So it's 30 from here. I'm drawing that a bit heavy now so you'll see it. 30 from there. So this here where they cross, that's 30 from both of them. And that's that radius 30 arc there. So use the dimensions given to complete the drawing of the helicopter. So just double check that you have everything in there now. So, and that's why it's important because there's a, I guess kind of a heavy line coming back through here. Curve is up that line, main rotor, tail rotor, skis so yeah i think that's everything there now okay so question five the image across shows a supermarket checkout okay so there's a slope here there's the the belt and shown below is the elevation and plan of the checkout two boxes a and b are on the belt so boxes A and B move with the belt until box A reaches the line LL1. Complete the given plan and elevation to show both boxes in their new positions. Okay, so be careful there now because it said complete the given plan and elevation. So, um, so we got to figure out where they are when the belt moves forward. Okay, so again there, if you could picture the two boxes there the there's a square one and the rectangular prism and they're going to move forward out to the very edge of the belt here so one of these is easy enough to do and that's a because when a moves over there and i just check the size of a so it goes forward until it's at the line ll so basically, that's going to be the new position for A. In the front view, and I'm going to color that in. So, Okay, so that's the new position for A. I'm going to call that A1. Now, if A moved forward, so it's going to be now straight up from here. So that's the new position for A on the belt. So again, I don't think you were asked to color these, but it does make it easier to understand it, I guess. So there's A1. 
in the front view and the top view. No. I think I'm safe in saying that because the belt is moving, and this is, I think, the key to understanding this, uh, because the belt is moving, the, the box doesn't twist or move or anything on the belt, as any of you that have stood watching your parents uh, checking out from Little or Aldi or wherever. So if A moved, if the back of A moved to here, or I could say the front of A moved right out to the edge, they'll all move the same distance. So basically the corner will go to there, this corner will go to here, there, and there. So they will all move the same distance. So another way I could have done that as well is uh, could stay parallel so if I had just used one of those distances there I could have also got the angle of let's say that yellow box there and I could have used the angle of it as well and that would have given me the same thing and because it's a rectangle those corners would have stayed 90 degrees so that's another way I could have done it So that there is going to be B1, the new position when the belt goes forward. So the next move there then is just to draw the front view of that. So the height stays the same. So the left front corner of the box, and then the front corner, and the back corner, and was that? Oh yeah, that was just turned at such an angle that the dotted line at the back is the two corners are behind each other. So this is B1 in the front view. And again, you weren't asked to color this in the exam, but I will stick a color on it because it makes it easier to understand it, all right. So next up there, shown below are cereal boxes on display in the supermarket and the space provided, write down the number of boxes in the display. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So you could number if you wanted 1, 2, 3, because they run the whole way through 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, because they're all running through, that was okay. So 5C, the elevation plan and incomplete in view of a supermarket entrance barrier are given. So the gates of the barrier open separately. One rotates through 30 degrees about O and the other one goes 45 degrees about N as shown by the broken lines in the plan. Okay, so complete the in view of the entrance barrier to show both gates in their rotated position. Okay, so again, I'm going to throw a tiny bit of colour on this here just to help us. So if I decided that this was a yellow barrier, and the other one there, I'll slap a colour on that. So this one's a blue barrier. No. So when they rotated, but we're we're standing here looking in 
from this direction so the yellow barrier bring it over to the in view bring it up take the height across So that there now is the yellow barrier, so it doesn't look when you're looking in from the side there now, and that's why I just think a bit of colour helps to understand this. Okay. Now, likewise then with the blue one, now the blue one sticks out further. Pardon me now for being paranoid, but I just want to make sure that the archidest. Because the people who set these questions, you couldn't show them, trust them not to have a little spanner thrown into the works. So, so bring it to in view, bring it up, take the height across. And basically, because they're at the same height, what's happening here? They're at the same height, but the blue one opens out to here. And when you're looking in from there, so you'll see the blue one sticking out a bit further. So a small bit of colour there, I know it slows us down, but it does help you to understand it. So that's the side view there. You can see the blue one sticking out past the yellow one because it's open at a bigger angle. So 5D. So shown below is an incomplete logo for self-service checkout. Complete the logo by constructing an axial symmetry in the line LL. So that's handy enough. If you know what axial symmetry is, I suppose it's handy enough. So it's basically like that L, L1 line is the center and it's kind of the same distance to the other side. So I'm going to draw the outline of it first. So how far to the left? Swing that over to the right. And I'll head in as I go. So you understand. So that is the top. Then how far to the left on the bottom? Same. Ah. Okay, so the same distance to the right. Okay, so that's the outline of the basket. That allows me then to heavy in the horizontals here. And again then, the sloping lines here, nice little question I have to say. So, how far to the right? And then the same one here on the bottom, the first one in from the outside. Finally there now, that last one. Okay, so that's vertical. It has a little hint of an optical illusion about it. So All right.
right so that's our logo completed now the last question here is uh, just says that there's a supermarket checkout again same as the last one and uh, complete the perspective drawing of the checkout okay so um no perspective there again you know i'm going to presume that people know what perspective is but all the lines go back to the vanishing points the horizontal lines go back to the vanishing points so that line is going towards there that line is going towards here i'll draw them a tiny bit heavier there now because I, I, I want to make sure that they so the, these light lines return to the vanishing points and i'll hit the end then with a hb pencil there so that there is this line on the ground so that's the first corner we found so then i'm going to call and just stick a few numbers on this to help people as well so that's corner one now vertical lines stay vertical which means that this goes off up here vertical and it's going to disappear when this comes back so i could if i wanted extend that up back there that's the bottom of the pulley of the conveyor belt and that tells me now so i could finish this off now if i wanted that first section of it So I'm going to call that point two, even though it's not a corner. Now, what to find next, really? What to find next? I'm going to find, uh, it doesn't really matter. I could find a tree because I have this point here. So I can just come down vertically from that. So that's corner three. And that allows me to heavy in this. Now, I'm going to try and find this corner four here next. Now, how do you find that corner there? Well, there's a, the easiest way to go about it is they kind of showed you this here boxed in. Okay, um, if you look here carefully, um, that, li that line there, so if I was to make a rectangle out of this, that would be going over there, that would be going over there, and this would be vertical going up from here giving me that point there and that vanishes then back to here horizontally so if i if i give these some numbers again so i have one two three four i'm going to call this corner here five even though we didn't it's not part of the object and then we found six and that's how we found four so i'm going to heavy that in there now so now that we know that that goes over to there and that slopes down to here so that's our con that blue surface there and again there now i'll just stick quick bit of shade on a rendering on that there just up so we basically came up from there to find that corner six and then went back to find four in a nutshell yeah. now what next then okay so really all we need to find here now 
is the end of the conveyor belt. Now again, the hint is here. This line goes back to there. You probably can't see that now on the camera, I'm guessing. So to understand this, I'll just try and zoom in on this here for a second. Is bad here now on this, but uh, you can see it fine on the exam paper. Hopefully, there now it's coming out. Okay, now what number had I gone to? Seven. I'm going to call this point here seven. You have to find that point there to find the end of the conveyor belt because it tells you there that they're at the same height. So you've got to find that point by returning it and then taking it back to the vanishing point, as you'll see here. So, sorry, now again, I'm just readjusting the camera there, but it would kind of be at nothing if I didn't do this, I think. Okay, so when you return that there, that there is the height of seven here. And when you return seven then horizontally to the left vanishing point, that line gives you this corner here. And when I extend that conveyor belt in then, and where they cross, if I call this corner out here, eight, that's it here. So it's heavy to there and heavy out here and that's corner eight. So just to double check there now we've got all the support, all of the truncated part of the prism, all of the belt now and I wasn't asked to colour it so I won't bother colouring any more of it than that. But again, yeah, that was the tricky part there was to find seven. Now look, if there's people there that love perspective, I'll just throw this out here as well. That if I extend it up from that vanishing point here vertically, if I extend it up from that there vertically, Was this thing on the page? It was, I'm sure that was just a coincidence that it worked out. Um, if I extend up there to that, well, this line over here also goes to that point. That was another way of finding that because parallel lines at the same slope go to the same, what's called an extra and auxiliary vanishing point up there. So that was another way, but I wouldn't expect any too many torturers to to know that. So that was another way of finding it. And uh, yeah, so that was the last. Was that was the last? Hang on a second, on the E. Yeah, that was the last. So yeah, uh, best to look at that, guys. The 2024 Junior Cycle Graphics Exam.